Hi, One Hour Smart Home here, and today we're going to show you how to set up the Ring Alarm Security System. The first thing that you need to do is download and install the Ring app, which we've got right here. Then you're going to need to log in or create an account, so we'll do that right now. Enter your name, click continue, choose your country, enter your email address, click continue, create your password. Once your password has been created, verify your email. Here you can link your Amazon and Ring accounts, but for now we're going to skip this. Let's set up two-step verification with SMS. We'll click continue. Enter your phone number, then click continue when you're done. Verify the code that was sent to you. Click continue. The next question it asks is to verify your location. Now, once you've logged in and created an account, you may need to answer additional questions to get the account set up, but eventually you'll end up on this screen. If you don't, just log out of the app and then log back in with your username and password. If you've already got an account, this is where you will end up on your home screen. Now, if this doesn't pop up to set up a device, all you're going to do is click over here in the upper left-hand corner, and then you're gonna click on set up a device. Here, we've got different options, but we're going to choose the security system because that's what we're setting up today. We're setting up the Ring Alarm security system with one ethernet port, so the standard base station is what we've got. We're going to make this selection here at the top. Now we need to set up our location if we have not already done so. So I'm going to click continue. It says what type of location is it? I'm going to click home and click continue. Now enter your address. Once we've entered our location, we're going to click use this address. Now we're going to click done. Location saved. Choose a good spot for your base station. Place it in a central location where sirens and alerts can be heard everywhere. Make sure it is near an electrical outlet and has internet connectivity via a strong Wi-Fi signal or nearby ethernet port. You can always move it to a different spot later. Now, all we're going to do is plug in our base station. So let's do that. We've got our Ring Alarm base station right here, and this powers up with the provided adapter in the Ring Alarm home security kit. Now, in order to set this up, all you're gonna need to do is power this up with the provided power adapter. Now, it also does come with an ethernet cord, and you can plug this into your Wi-Fi router if you wanted to. However, that's not necessary. The Ring Alarm home security system will work with just Wi-Fi connection and connect to your existing Wi-Fi network. So we're just going to connect it with Wi-Fi, but if you wanted to have a more secure installation and you wanna have it directly wired to your router, you can do so with the provided an ethernet cable, but that's not necessary. And it's often easier with Wi-Fi because then you can place the base station anywhere. So we're gonna plug in the power adapter and then plug it into our ring base station. The ring power adapter plugs in right here and then you just fold that up and now you're ready to go. This is powered up and there's a little light that lights up on the side of it. So we're going to click continue here on the app. It says connect your base station to the ring app. Wait for the LED light ring to light up. So you've got your LED light rings right here. You can see them. We've got a Wi-Fi symbol and then we've got our power up. So we're waiting for this light ring right here in the middle of the light up. And then we're gonna be ready to install this and connect it to the Ring app. The light ring lit up after about a minute of waiting for it. And now that means that we're ready to connect it to the Ring app. So there's a pairing button right here on the bottom of this device. And we're just going to click that. And then we're gonna click find my base station. So I'm gonna click the pairing button with my left hand right here. Clicked it. And now I'm going to click find my base station. And you can see once I press the pairing button, that LED ring started to rotate, which means it's searching for the base station, as you can see over here. It says, do you want to continue with the Ethernet or Wi-Fi setup? We're going to connect to Wi-Fi. The next screen that popped up says select your Wi-Fi network. So we're going to select our Wi-Fi network now. Once we enter our Wi-Fi network password, we just click continue. You can see the light is turning a different color on our Ring Alarm base station as it's getting set up, and it says it's connecting to our Wi-Fi network. The next screen that pops up says your Ring Protect Pro trial starts now. So they do give you a free trial of the typically subscription service. However, you don't need to pay for a subscription to use the Ring Alarm. It just means that you will have more features with that professional trial. 
and you're going to have professional monitoring. Now, you don't need that to operate the Ring alarm system. You can operate it completely free of professional monitoring. It just means that you're going to get the alerts on your phone, and it's going to sound inside your house when the alarm is tripped, but it won't call a professional monitoring center. So let's click continue here. This tells you what you get with the Ring Protect, 24-7 professional monitoring, cellular backup, and 180 days of video storage. We're going to click Get Started. Now we're going to click I Agree. We're just going to click Fix It Later. We're going to click Fix It Later. Now it's updating. This is the next screen that popped up once the software update was complete. So now we're ready to add our Ring Alarm devices because we've got the base station set up for the Ring Alarm system. So I'm going to click Add Ring Alarm Devices right here, and it just says you have not set up your Ring Alarm security devices yet. That's fine because we're going to add them now, so click Add Devices. Here, what happens is you get populated information from all your sensors that come as part of the Ring Alarm Kit. So I can see my Ring keypad right there, and that's going to be the first item that we set up. It says plug in the keypad. So I've got the Ring Alarm keypad right here, and all we need to do is plug it in. On the back side of this, you can see there is a little mounting plate here. So you just slide that off. And then if you wanted to, you could mount this on the wall by screwing it into position. And then you can actually slide this back on here and it's going to hold it in place. So that's a really nice feature. Now you just have to plug this in to charge it up because it is battery powered. And in my experience, the Ring Alarm keypads last about two years on battery power before you need to charge them up. But you could also leave it hardwired. Now it does come with a keypad adapter and that's just the power adapter that you need to plug in to get this charged up initially. So we're gonna open this up and then we're gonna get that keypad set up and installed. So here's the Ring keypad power adapter that comes with the kit and all you're gonna do is plug it into the back of the Ring keypad. Now it also has those screws if you wanted to mount the mounting plate on a wall. So we're gonna plug it in now. We take the keypad and we just take our power adapter and plug it in right to the back side of this device. Okay, we've got it in and then you can just run the cord down here if you are going to permanently mount it with the power adapter, but you don't have to do that. You just have to get this charged up. I say it takes about two hours to get it entirely charged up if you're going to use it in the battery powered configuration. So now that it's powered up, we can click on the Ring keypad over here in the app to finish setting it up. It says, let's set up your keypad. We're going to click continue. What room will you place your keypad in? I'm going to say that this will be in the family room. Now we're going to give it a name. We're gonna call this one entryway keypad. Let's set up your keypad. Place your keypad in a convenient spot on a nightstand or tabletop or mounted on a wall. So what I found is helpful is I like to keep one in a nightstand next to the bed, and I also like to put a keypad down by the front door or garage door, wherever I'm gonna come in and out of the home most often, so that I can arm and disarm my system as needed. Now you can also arm and disarm the system from your phone, so you don't have to use a keypad, but I do find it convenient having one upstairs to arm it before I go to bed, as well as then disarm it in the morning when I get up from bed. Now you can also arm it or disarm it right at the door, so wherever you wanna put one of these, you can do that, but you can also get additional keypads. You can connect multiple Ring Alarm keypads to the Ring Alarm system, and I find that's one of the major benefits of this system. So let's click continue. Choose your access code. We're going to click continue. Enter a four digit access code. We're just gonna choose one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and then click continue. Great, your access code has been created. We're going to click continue. Success. Our keypad is ready to use. We're going to click Done. Now we can set up other devices, but there's some basics to know about the keypad. You've got three buttons up top here. This is disarmed, this is armed and home, and that means it's going to only arm window or door sensors. This is away and armed, and that will arm all sensors, including motion sensors. And the thought behind that is, if you had your motion sensors 
armed while you were home, you'd most likely set them off. That's why they've got this away and armed logo. Now, when I go to bed, I typically click away and armed, which arms all my motion sensors and all my window and door sensors or contact sensors. Now, if you have the professional monitoring service over here, you can click one of these three in an emergency, and that's for police, fire, or medical attention. And what will happen when you click those, once you've signed up for the subscription service, is that Ring will then contact you to verify that there is an emergency if you press those, and then send first responders based on what's happening. Now, to use the keypad, all you're going to do is click the numbers on your keypad for your code, and then click what you want it to do. So I'm going to click one, two, three, four, and I'm going to have it disarmed. If I wanted to arm it, I would click two, three, four, and if I want it armed in a way, I'm just going to click, and now it's arming it, but I'm going to reverse that, so I just enter my code and click disarmed. Now we're ready to set up one of our next sensors for the ring alarm system. Now I'm gonna show you how to set up a ring alarm contact sensor or ring alarm window and door sensor. So all we're gonna do is open up the ring alarm contact sensor and it comes in two pieces, so we'll dump this out. What you've got here is this piece that has batteries in it and then this piece that has a magnet in it. When the window or door is opened, these two spread apart and then that's going to set off the alarm. Now, typically what I do is I'm going to place this larger piece on the moving piece, like the door or the window that will be moving, and then this piece on the non-moving side, like the door frame, just because it tends to fit better because it is smaller and easier to put on a piece of trim. So now that we're ready to set up the contact sensor, all I need to do is pull the little tab right here on the contact sensor itself. You can also see there's a little QR code as well as a pin number on the ring contact sensor and that matches up to the contact number sensors right here. The one I'm setting up is 45866 and that's not necessarily relevant for this, but we're going to set it up by just pulling the tab and then it will add the device automatically to the account. So pull that piece of plastic out. Sometimes it's in there pretty tight. We've got it out and you can see that lit up the ring contact sensor and it's showing that it's adding a device right here and configuring it. So as soon as we removed that battery sensor, it started to set it up and now our ring contact sensor is added to the account. You could see that little light that popped on here and that means that this is ready to go and I can just click there and that will turn that light back on and confirm that the battery is active on this device. So how these work, once you pull them apart like that, you're gonna hear that beep beep from the ring alarm system. You can turn that off if you don't want that, but it is a nice notification. Now that we've got this successfully connected to the Ring Alarm base station, we're ready to click Device Added, tap here to finish setting up. Let's set up your contact sensor. We're going to click Continue. It says, where will this sensor be used? Main door, secondary door, or window? If you choose main door, what it does is gives you a certain amount of entry and exit delay time. So you're gonna be able to open up your front door, get to your keypad to disarm the system if you had, let's say, a 30 second or one minute delay because you put this on the main door setting. If you put it on the secondary door setting, as soon as the door is opened, if you've got your ring security system armed, what will happen is it will trigger the alarm and set off the sirens on the device. You can also choose a window and when armed, the siren will sound immediately. So it's important to note that if you are using this at the door that you plan on entering with, you need to make sure that you designate it as a main door and that will give you that 30 to 60 seconds on the entry delay. And then you're gonna be able to open the door with your keys go to your keypad and disarm the alarm system so that it doesn't have a false alarm. So we're just gonna choose a secondary for this one right here and move on from there. So I'm gonna call this one primary bedroom and it says give your contact sensor a name. We're just gonna call this one a bedroom one. It says, if you're installing this contact sensor on a door, choose the side without hinges. We're going to click continue. Here it says, make sure the installation area is clean and free of dust. We're going to click continue. 
check that the contact sensor has the right amount of space. The contact sensor can only have one inch max of space between this piece, the magnet, and the sensor itself. So you wanna make sure that it's not too far away. We're going to click continue. Now let's mount the contact sensor on your door or window. So we're gonna to go to our door and we're gonna mount this. So we're gonna put the sensor right here on the door and it does have these nice adhesive sticky pads on the back. So you can just peel those off. But if you wanna mount it in a more permanent installation, you can pry these two covers off and you do have a little screw hole there and you can screw this to the wall or your door, wherever you're gonna put this. So for me, I'm gonna put this larger piece, just peel and stick this off and I'm gonna put it right here and then I'm going to put my other piece right here on the trim. And it's a little bit less than an inch, and so that's gonna work. But if you're having issues, you can always find something to shim out the sensor so it's closer like this. But how it works is that when the door passes the magnet, that's what triggers it. So even if it's like this, you're still gonna get that as a closed sensor, and then once you pull it through, it's going to be open. So now I'm just gonna peel off the peel and stick adhesive on this piece right here, and place it on our door like so. Okay, we've peeled off the adhesive, and now we're just gonna take this in, place it on our door right here. Now I hold it down for about 30 seconds as hard as possible to let the adhesive set in place. We held the door sensor in place long enough, and now we're ready to install the magnet side of the door sensor. So we're just going to remove the adhesive on the back here, and it's just a peel and stick adhesive, so you peel that off, and then this is ready to stick on the door. So peel it off right there, and now I'm gonna line it up with my sensor on the trim piece. I'm gonna put it right here, and I'm gonna do the same thing where I hold this for 30 seconds in place so that it has a nice, strong adhesion. Now here the phone just says, let's mount the contact sensor to your window or door. We've done that, so we click continue. It says open and close the door to test a contact sensor. So now we're just going to test open and closing the door. So once we open it up, you can hear it beep, and it also says a door opened right here at the top. That means that our sensor is correctly installed and we are done installing this sensor. So now we can click through and click done. Now that we got the contact sensor set up, we're ready to set up the ring motion sensor, which we've got right here. In order to set this up, all we're gonna do is verify the numbers that are also on the back of this device right here, and they match the numbers that are on the app. So all I have to do is pull this out, and that's gonna set up the ring alarm motion sensor. You can see it's blinking here, and it's adding the device right here. Once it's connected, we can click right here and finish setting it up. It says, let's set up your motion detector. It's designed to secure rooms and hallways. They're gonna ask a few questions so we understand where it's being used. Click continue. It says, where will this be used? I'm going to use it in a room. That means that the alarm will sound immediately when motion is detected. Now, if you use it in the entry, that's gonna give you that time delay so that you can disarm at the keypad your ring alarm system, or you could disarm it with your phone. But you just need to know the difference. That entryway gives you a delay. The room does not. So we're gonna click room right here. Now we get to choose where we're gonna place this. I'm just going to say we're gonna place this in the kitchen. Give your detector a name. We're gonna give it a custom name and click continue. It says install your motion detector. Peel the backing from the mounting tape found on the back of the motion detector. So you've got mounting tape right here. And what's nice about this is that it does have it on an angle. So what you can do is you could place this in the corner of a room if you wanted to between two walls because you've got an angle here and you have an angle here. And then it'll go right between those walls and sit just like this. Now you can also place it flat and then that will set it up. Or you could just set it on top of a bookcase or a tabletop or wherever you wanted to. So we're not going to install it on a wall or anything right now because I don't know exactly where I want it in the particular room, but I'm going to click continue. It says want to test your motion detector. This can help identify the area your motion detector covers. We're going to test it. Okay, motion is detected and that's because I'm right in front of it. So. It took about a minute for that motion to reset, but we can test it again by putting our hand in front of it and see if motion was detected. 
There we go, motion was detected, so now we're going to click Done. Success, your motion detector is configured and ready to use. Let's click Done. Great, now our Ring Alarm System has been set up and installed. We're just gonna click Skip Device Setup for right now. Now we've got one of each of the Ring Alarm Sensors set up on the security system. We've got a window and door sensor set up, and we've got our motion sensor set up, as well as our keypad, which means that our alarm system has been set up, and you can just add additional sensors as needed to your house as you plan out where you're going to install them. Once you've clicked through that, you're going to go back to the home screen on the Ring app, and this is what's going to show up. Here you've got the different alarm modes, disarmed, home, and away. So disarmed means that the system isn't going to trigger any kind of alarm when the motion sensors or contact sensors are tripped. When you have it in home mode, only the contact sensors will be active unless you've designated other motion sensors to be active. When you've got it in away mode, both the motion sensors and the window and door sensors or contact sensors are active, which means if motion is detected or a window and door is opened up, that's going to trigger the system. Now here it says the alarm is self-monitored. And what that means is that the alarm will alert you on your phone if it goes off, as well as the alarm, which has a built-in siren that is very loud, will go off and alert you that the security system has been triggered, but it will not call the professional monitoring center. You're gonna to have to go through some additional information here to set up the professional monitoring and verify your location so that if you've got that set up, they can send first responders to your home if you are going to use the professional monitoring system. But what's nice about not having it professionally monitored or self-monitoring is that you can test out the system and see how it works without triggering any false alarms when it's self-monitored. So it won't contact a call center or first responders while it is self-monitored, which is a nice way to test it out for a week or two to see how it works so that you're not getting those false alarms and accidentally triggering the call center and potentially first responders. In my opinion, it's a good idea to at least test it out in self-monitoring mode for a few hours until you get it all set up and understand how the system works a little bit better so that you don't have those false alarms. Now we can click right here and then that goes into the alarm system and you can see all of our different sensors and it gives a status. So we've got our base station right here, which is online. We've got our keypad right here, which is charged up now and it's also online. We've got our bedroom sensor right here and then we've got our motion sensor right here as well. So we can click Click on this sensor and then we can get open alerts, close alerts if we want, look through the event history. If we click right here, you can see what's going on on all those different statuses and when the door was open or closed. And you can go in here and change any of these modes or get different alerts. Now let's close back out of this and just go to the home screen. So now that our ring alarm system is set up, we could use this and if we wanted to, we could make it professionally monitored. But if I wanna arm it and I click home, I can click oh right God. here and what that's going to do is that's going to arm all of my contact sensors like I've got right here, but the motion sensors won't be alarmed. Then if I click away, both the motion sensors and the contact sensors will be alarmed. So I'm just gonna trigger it by opening a door and you'll hear the alarm go off. I turn the volume way down for triggering the alarm because it is incredibly loud. Trust me when I say this, the ring alarm system is more than loud enough that you're gonna hear it throughout your home as long as you place it in a central location. So thank you for watching this video on how to set up your ring alarm system. Thank you and we'll see you next time.